everyone, it's Geekonomics. We're back. We are both at home today celebrating the leftover remnants of the July 4th holiday. Hope everyone had a good weekend, had a good holiday. How are you doing, Brian? How was your holiday weekend? Mark, I am doing good. I don't know why. <laughs> I thought of something and it's cracking me up. Oh, okay. I got to stay focused. So <laughs> my holiday weekend was... It went by, it was nice. I, I've been off since Friday. It feels like I feel refreshed. It felt like a mini vacation. I think I spent every day outside. Um, like it just, it was nice. How was yours? It was good, good. When Saturday we went over to uh, Claire's dad's house or uh, stepfather's house, I should say. Uh, and uh, went over and hung out there for a little bit. And then went to the East Long Meadow Fireworks which oddly enough had a perfect viewing angle of the Six Flags fireworks. Oh yeah. Which happened uh, before the East Long Metal fireworks. So after the Six Flags fireworks, I just turned to Claire and I'm like, can we just go now? And I was like, I'm good. <laughs> that was far enough away where I saw fireworks. So we stayed for the first couple to go off and then like we just took off because we're like, yeah, it's too many. I don't want to be stuck in tra traffic for an hour trying well, to get to East Long Meadow. You're getting old. I don't want to be stuck in traffic. I'll save her only. Oh, it's just nuts. It's ridiculous. People park everywhere. Because she lives right off the main, her, their house is right off the main drag. Yeah. And we were just walking back during the fireworks happening. It was just dead still traffic. Oh, like, yeah. All the way to the circle, all the way down. It was just, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. We can go. Our neighborhood was lighting off fireworks yesterday. It was from like the moment it got dark to like 10 yeah. 30, just all over yeah. the goddamn place. Yeah, yeah, they were still going off until like 1 a.m. last night in Springfield. So, oh, oh, well, Enfield has their official fireworks this weekend. Yes, the uh, the taste of Enfield. Yeah, which we, yes. went, we went through it last week. We don't need to go yes. through it again. But Fourth July celebration. They're actually going to release the menu for the taste this week. Ooh, it's a post online. So get ready to find out all the fun treats you can have at the Taste of Enfield. The, the really expensive foods you can yes. buy at yes. the, waste of, the Waste of Enfield. I mean, the Taste of yeah. Enfield. Um, yeah. There's also a food truck festival at uh, Evergreen Walk this weekend. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um. Saturday, I have to go to Look Park for a celebration of life. Oh. I will not be going to the... Yeesh. Um, But uh, a food truck festival does sound pretty good. Yeah. For Green Walk, too, huh? Yeah. Is that a Saturday? Sunday? I want to say Saturday and Sunday. I could be... I just know that we're going on Saturday, so... Awesome. Yeah. Um, all right, Mark um we were we will be discussing stranger things at the end of the show yes or we'll warned I'm wearing we'll my be... uh, Dungeons and dragons shirt in honor of stranger things nice um i do we do want to start the show off by reminding everybody uh, about the manchester comic and toy convention it will be happening this month july 24th yes su the sunday 10 a.m to 3 p.m admissions yeah. Five dollars. You start weekends away. Yeah, kids ten and under are free. It's at the Army and Navy Club at ten ninety Main Street, Manchester, Connecticut. Um, you'll see comics, toys, collectibles of yesterday and today. Um, probably more toy toy oriented cards, classic eighties toys and stuff of that nature. Um, the last show was really well attended. Um, yes. I highly recommend come early if you can. It's I'm sure this one's going to be highly attended as well. Um, I Matt will, Ryan will be doing caricatures. Matt Ryan will be there. Yes. And if you go on Facebook and look it up, he's been releasing guests every couple of days. Yeah. Matt Ryan was released. Um, there's a couple of uh, local artists, some yes. comic book people who will be there. There's going to be a cosplay contest, which is very yes. popular. Um, and I think the winner last time, I can't tell you what, what you would win now, but last time the winner got, I think, a $50 gift 
gift card to any booth at there. Yeah, and also I think a gift card to a local comic shop in the area too. Oh, okay. Yeah. But we, I don't know what the yeah, first yeah. place yeah. winner is going to be this time, yeah. but it's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely we hope to see you there. Yeah, and you can get tickets in advance too, correct? You don't have to get them at the door. Yeah, I think if you go to the web, you go to the, look it up on Google. Yeah, I don't know where that is. Look it up on the Facebook. On the Facebook. Uh, Mark, I got new, well, before news, um, anything you want to talk about before I jump into news? How was your week? Uh, Any, you watch anything of interest? We'll finish Stranger Things. Um, have dove back into uh, Only Murders in the Building on Hulu. I love that show. It's very well done. Here is uh, good. Steve Martin, Martin Short, Selena Gomez, and a slew of fun cast. Like this year, they have Amy Schumer is on there. And uh, Tina Fey pops up a lot. I think she's an executive producer or something. Uh, so that show's really good. I think you and Allison would like that show. Yeah, I heard good things. I want to. Yeah. Check yeah. Uh, uh, watching the Orville. Yeah. Oh, well. yeah. I just, speaking of the Orville, I am in the middle of season one. I just watched the episode with Rob Lowe. When he, yes. he shows up as this alien, yes. well, he's the alien that um, had the affair with with um, his wife in the very beginning. Yes, and he has like he makes people like fall in love with him. Yeah, with yeah. these hormones he has, and yes. uh, Norm Macdonald's blob. Yes, it's lucky finally. Yes, he has sex with the doctor. And it yes. was disturbing when they opened the door and the blob is encompassing her whole body. It was very weird. Yes. But it was a great episode. And how's the new season? It's really good. It's really well done. It's doing a very good job of uh, expanding the universe more. Because it's not under the Fox umbrella anymore. This is the first Hulu-only season. Yeah. So it's a little bit... You could definitely tell they've been given more money to do things yeah so you know the special effects was never that bad i mean it was no, not right. just that I, I mean not like the special effects side of it just like the storytelling and like there's more space shots and more like that kind of stuff like right right there's more special effects that they're able to do now yeah. than they were doing beforehand yeah and the story's like and it's gets flushed out more in season two and stuff but now they're like really delving into a lot more stuff nice really them, you know topics and things i'm excited but to get there it's a really it. well done show yeah yeah and then uh, yesterday we had our annual uh marvel marathon uh in honor of independence day we watched all the captain america movies oh nice yeah that's our thing we do a little just the avengers ones not, not like actual captain america but any like group avenger movies so Avengers, Age of Ultron, Civil War, and then the Infinity Saga. Gotcha. So that makes more sense. When you say Captain America, I'm thinking you watch the Captain America movies. Well, yeah. I mean, it's really only like the other two are just Captain America and uh, Winter Soldier. Yeah. Which we don't do those two, but we do all the other ones. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, how is Miss Marvel going? It's good. It's getting really interesting. They're doing a really good job. They're uh, really fleshing out her character's origin more than I think we've seen in other mediums, which would be the video game, basically. Um, in the comics. Yeah, yeah. But, but more her powers the, are different than they were. Yeah, they're definitely switching it up. And like they're not as like, it's not like her body is... Elastic. Extending and elongating. It's like a, uh, like a, I don't know what the word would be, uh, like an ethereal appendages, like are being shot out of the bracelet, is what's causing it. It's not her, uh, it's the, like aura around her that's causing the gotcha. things to happen. So she's able to do like, like little platforms she could run on and stuff like that. 
like so, the ten rings sort of deal. Yeah, very much in the ten rings uh, version. So they're definitely like connecting those two <clears throat> characters together in the way that they're telling the story. Yeah. So there's gonna be some kind of like they're like the bracelets from Shang Chi and the gauntlets from Miss Marvel are gonna be connected from the same like planet or something. There's gonna be some kind of connection there, I think. Yeah. But That's it's really cool. good. Yeah. I mean, I know it's really popular, like from what I've read everywhere, it's really popular in the younger demographic. So yeah. Which is good because you need to get those people pulled into the, you know. Well, we got the Thor coming. I'm super got the excited. Thor. Super excited. Like about TT. I know. It's uh, back. It's Korg. Um, anything else, Mark? I got a few things before. I that was about it. There wasn't much else. Just you know, like you okay. like you said, just enjoying the weekend, not having to do anything. Um. Well, this weekend. Obviously, we finished Stranger Things, but we, oh my Careful. God. I Careful. Hold on. Hold on to your butts. Careful. I'm, I'm getting wacky over here. Jeez. I think I'm drunk. No. Um, <laughs> I think I'm drunk. I don't know if I'm drunk. I don't know. I I I'm drunk. I'm drunk on life. Okay. Drunk on life. So we started Barry season three at the beginning of the week. We finished it uh, on Saturday night or Sunday night. Mm fucking amazing um amazing amazing i don't know where they're gonna go with season four but um bill Hader not only was his acting like amazing but he directed the majority of the episodes i think he might have yeah. directed all of them but like fantastic highly recommend barry amazing show season four is in the works um we started season two what we do in the shadows Oh, hilarious. Um, Very it, good. It's so funny because we watched the first season when it first dropped, when it first was coming out. Yeah. And season two happened and we never, we just forgot about it. And then we needed something new to watch because we finished our Scrubs rewatch. Yeah. And I was like, oh, we should jump back into this. And we are already middle of the season. The episode where Laszlo runs away and he becomes Jackie Daytona. Yes, hilarious. Jackie Daytona. I forgot about that episode. He's got his toothpick and his yes. jeans, and he puts yes. his toothpick in, and you don't recognize it. Yes. And Mark Hamill plays the other vampire that's trying to get his yes. money. Yes. His hundred and seventy dollars. Yes. Oh my God, the show is just hilarious. It's so, so it's so stupid. It's hilarious. They, they got a new season coming out in a couple weeks. Yes. Um. So we have to watch season three still. Season four will be coming out. Very excited for that. Um, I'm also in the middle of This Flag Means Death. I really enjoy, speaking of Watiki, playing Blackbeard. I think it's yes. awesome as Blackbeard. Um, that show it just gets crazier that season. That show. Yeah, that show is really good. I'm in the middle right now. I kind of watch one every couple of days. Um, I really, really enjoy it. Um, and because Umbrella Academy season three is on Netflix. Oh yeah, I just I finished watching that too. I forgot to talk about that. How how was? What do you think about season three? Uh, it's different than the book. It's loosely based off of the I can't remember which book it was with the the motel, the hotel on the edge of space kind of thing. Remember that one? I can't remember which volume that was. But it kind of has that in it, and craziness ensues. Well, I just started reading volume one. Oh, okay. There's only three volumes. Yes. So I'm assuming volume three is probably loosely based on season three. Uh, very loosely. Because I, I'm in the middle of volume one right now, and it makes me excited to start the show with fresh eyes. I've tried to start yeah. the show twice. I'm, I'm definitely, once I finish volume one, I'm going to start watching it, and then I'll yeah. finish reading. Um, but the big difference already in the volume one is um, seven. Uh, yes. Ellie uh, um, oh, yeah. Page plays. Yes. 
she's like she becomes the villain yeah and like she becomes like the super violinist and she just explodes people by playing and i'm like wow this is interesting um so i am i'm excited to finish volume one and to jump into uh the show and give the show a fair shot because those first two times i tried I watched it late at night. I was tired. Um, now, I'm I'm very excited. So don't tell me anything. Um, so I think that's it for me, Mark. Um, news. I got some news. Oh, so before we get into that, though, speaking of comic book stuff. Yeah, yeah. The boys. Uh, we're going to start the boys this week. No oh spoiler. my god. Okay. We'll we'll talk about that later. They do hero gasm. I know. This we talk, I know. Don't tell me. Um it happened. We we are watching it. We're gonna start our next show. We want to finish Barry, Stranger Things, and the boys is next. Um, so news mark. Yes. So guess what movie? How is now the biggest 4th of July debut ever in North America. Can you Minions, guess? Rise of Gru. Yes. $108.5 million. And overseas, you're looking at $127.9 million. Yeah. Um, it beat Transformers Dark, uh, Dark of the Moon and Spider-Man 2. Um. This is crazy. So also, I mean, is it though? Yes, it kind of is. That it's a kids movie. movie. It's perfect for kids. You take your kids, drop them in the theater, and do whatever you want. I have a uh, news for you. News for you, Mark. So these, this online trend, where these young people, like teenagers, twenty-something-year-olds, yeah, they were all posting videos of opening night and they're all wearing suits. Yeah. And like 10, 12 of them. And they would all show up at the theater and they all shake each other's hands. Like they're mm. seeing like a high flipping movie and they all go yeah. see the Minions movie and they're all dressed to the nines. And then this became a thing on TikTok and social yeah. media where people were sharing all these videos. Everybody dressed up um, in suits to watch mm. The Minion movie. So it's not Whatever. just kids. It's so weird. But you think about it, that the, the Minions movies have been on, have been going on now, I want to say for at least 15 years. Is it, yeah, probably. So it, it, kids who were eight, nine, when the first movie of this Despicable Me universe came out, are now in their 20s. So this has been their movie that they've like grown up with. Wow. Okay. Despicable Me came out in 2010. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. Wow. So life is moving too quickly, Mark. Yeah. That's like, that's, I'm looking up, I'm like, yeah, that's crazy. That's, yeah. It's like we're looking at, you know, 12, 13 years. Yeah. What year is it? 2022. 2022. Yeah, so 12 years. I don't even know. I don't even know what year it is anymore. <laughs> what year is it? Thank what year is it? Maybe Get off my lawn. Get off my lawn. Um, so yeah, if a kid was 10 years old when that movie came out and he loved it, that kid's now 22. Yeah. That's crazy. And still going to see those movies. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy. Well, we'll see if Thor can uh dethrone it i know the pre-sales for thor are really big so we'll see what happens this weekend um i got marvel news marcus yes kingsman taron egerton still yes. wants to play wolverine and it is reported that he's met with marvel and he has met with uh kevin feige <sighs> how do you feel about this no Next question. <laughs> well, explain. I don't 
I've never seen a I've never seen a Kingsman movie with him in it. I've only seen one Kingsman movie. You and seen I'm, you saw uh, Rocket Man? No, I never movie. saw Rocket Man. But you saw the things for that? That was him. Yes, I heard he was really good. He's good. I just don't see him as being Wolverine. Well, in this article, he does state how that playing Wolverine after Hugh Jackman. He said, I'd be excited, but it'd be very apprehensive as well because um, because he, you know, um, what's his name? <laughs> I think I'm drunk. Um, why can't I say his name? Who? Taron Edgerton? Um, no. Who plays Wolverine? Hugh now. Jackman? Hugh Jackman. God, I can't. You say. just said it two seconds ago. I know. Hugh Jackman is associated How much with. How coffee have you had this morning? I uh, three cups. Uh, <laughs> I wonder That's probably why. If I'd be very difficult for someone else to do it. <laughs> I really. You're like think, you're like a little kid going to see the Minions movie right now. Jeez. I am. I'm hopped up on goofballs. Just Gee, Louise, don't pay attention to me. No um, more sugar I, for you, young man. I I think you know. I really think. The guy who plays Wayne and Chorzy should play Wolverine. Uh, he'd be good at it, but I just don't think he's like in the zeitgeist of being a person that they would grab. Yeah, it's perfect. It's a, I know it's perfect, but I don't think that he's like somebody that's like going to be in the running for it, so to speak. I, I'm not saying who I think is in the running. On a personal level, that's who I think. Oh, I agree with you. I'm agreeing with you. I'm just saying, I just don't think that's ever going to happen. Well. It would so have to be somebody. It's going to be somebody random. You don't think Taron Egerton's random, though? No. I think he'd be a better Cyclops. Really? Yeah. You think he's too much of a pretty boy? Yes. And do you think he's, like, a little too skinny? Yes. Fair. I mean, I don't really know much. Not even like skinny so much. It's just like his body type, I think, more would work in a Cyclops than in a Wolverine. Gotcha. Like, it's weird to say, like, you need like somebody more rugged to play right. Wolverine. That's why uh, the guy who plays Wayne, he would, he, he's at the upper body strength. Yeah. Oh, I mean, but just like you, you need to have like a, and the body shape. You need to have like the the Hugh Jackman works in that character because of his body shape fits the comic book character more. Well, not really, because Hugh Jackman. Well, I mean, more true. than Taron Egerton would would like. You need to be like broader shouldered. This is weird to say, but broader shouldered, smaller hips, kind of small legs areas. It's like, like you need to be like a triangle, kind of. Yeah. Whereas Erdogan's not that body shape. Right. Fair. That's fair. But then again, I'd have to say, like, I'm pretty sure if someone had said back when they were talking about Hugh Jackman being Wolverine, there's probably the same thing said, like, oh, I don't think he could pull it off. You do know Marvel shapes these people into, like, fucking, they make them work out, you know, so he would Well, it's like, the thing is, it's like, they do such a they've done such a great job of picking the people to be the characters like you can't see iron man without seeing robert Downey jr anymore right. right you can't see captain america without seeing chris evans you can't see like these characters like black widow hawkeye like these like they did such a good job of casting these characters like even doctor strange loki it's like they all like look without any kind of added stuff, basically like those characters from the comic books. Yeah. So I think it's like, you have to like oddly find people, actors that look relatively close to those characters. I agree. But they like have- even Chris Pratt looks like Star-Lord. Yeah. But Chris Hemsworth was born to be Thor. It was like, it's like that kind of thing. It's like, you have to oddly find those people. That's why I think I'm going to get his real name, Jared 
is it Kiso? Jared Kiso. Keso, maybe? I don't is know. it Keso? K E E S O. Kiso. Yeah. Kiso. yeah. I really think he's got the body shape. He does. And he's Canadian. That's what I'm saying. So you already got it. It's already there. You don't have to do any work. Seriously. But I just don't know. Like, I just don't know if listening to interviews of him, if he would be that into jumping into the mainstream like that much, like that kind of character. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a big thing. Yeah. And we probably would be saying goodbye to any more uh, Letter of Kenny for a long yeah. time. Yeah. Which I miss that show on a daily. I think about that show all the time. Yeah. I can't wait for the new season to come back. I want more Shorzy. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. I got one more bit of Marvel Marvel news. Marvel's coming out of my mouth here. Uh, Marvel news. So Dr. Doom. Dr. Was, Doom. Uh, leaked by Howard Stern on a hot mic. He I heard was, about this. It was going to a commercial break during his show. Yeah. And he was talking to his producer about getting guests. And uh, Howard Stern um, says, you know, he's trying to bank some stuff because he's going to be filming this summer. And they asked him what? And he goes, I'm going to be doing Dr. Doom. Um, and he goes, but believe me, I'm effing miserable about it. Um, only because he's really nervous. And I guess he was trying to talk to Robert Downey Jr., or John Favreau for acting tips. And mm. he is basically just rumored to be playing a version of himself in the universe. Yeah. Um, but also we don't know if this is going to be a show or a movie. Um, but the fact that this was leaked just by a hot mic leads us we're getting closer to fantastic four territory well, i don't think i think it's going to be fantastic four i don't think it's dr doom i think they're just he's filming a part of the fantastic four movie with dr doom i don't know mark because dr doom is a very fascinating character and they if they gave us a dr doom show just to give us a background in dr doom that could lead into the fantastic four movie i think they would have announced it already if they were doing a dr doom show I mean, they announced basically every other show that they're thinking of doing. So why I wouldn't mean, you announce Doctor Doom? He, you, you could be right. He could be doing Fantastic Four, and he could just be misspeaking about because Fast Fantastic Four is going to be starting filming this summer. Well, then it's probably that because it comes out relatively soon, I believe, like next year or the year after. Yeah. So it makes sense that it would be the Fantastic Four movie. So you probably just misspoke. So. Or he's just ribbing everybody. It is, it is Howard Stern, after all. Well, I don't know. It was a hot mic moment. And um, that's exciting. That's exciting news, I think. Yeah. Um, and I, so think I think that comes out in 2024. Uh, the, the rumor. I think when they, when they announced all that stuff, like at Comic Con last year, and there's um there's also rumors that John Krasinski will be playing Doctor uh, Reed Richards. Well, I mean that's already like he did it in the movie already, so it kind of makes sense. I mean, why else would you do it? I mean, yeah. If you're going to cast him for just one movie, that makes no sense. Right. Well, um, yeah. I mean, oh, 2023. Yeah. So there you go. Or 2020. Oh, no, no, no. It's going to be in 2024. Okay. But hold on. Potential release dates are 2023 November or February 2024. So if they film it this year, they give them plenty of time yeah. for special effects and they yeah. can put it out at the end of next year or 2024. You know, yeah. these movies are going to get changed around only because we're still in a pandemic. We're coming out yeah, of We're one. still pushing everything around from that. So it's like there's things that are. Yeah. So anywho, yeah. I think Howard's probably pulled a 
you know, when you're a kid and you can be playing a video game and your parents would be like, how is this a Nintendo? And you're like, it's not an, everything was a Nintendo. Uh, he yeah. could be like Dr. Doom because maybe that's what he. Well, he might be filming a scene with Dr. Doom. Yeah. Before he becomes Dr. Doom. And they're just saying like, oh, you'll be doing a thing with Dr. Doom's character. Right. And that's what he was thinking. I'm just doing a Dr. Doom movie. Yeah. Total. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, all right, Marcus. Stranger Things season four. Holy Stranger moly. Things. Holy macaroni. <clears throat> Stranger Things season four. I, part two. Episode eight and nine. Well, I mean, we we really didn't discuss much about the any of it really yes that's true we have not because um, you were waiting on you to watch it because you're as always wait I'm behind a month um, after everything's come out to even look at it i say this by far one of my favorite seasons of the show oh light years light years better than anything else they've done yeah and i i loved just so much about the season i loved eddie mvp baby eddie oh, yeah. you're our dog forever yeah um he had Bobby Kegler energy. Yes, very much so. Yeah, that's what I got off of him. Yes. Um, I, I, I have no problem admitting I must have cried at least three times. Oh, my gosh. Um, Not even three times, more than that. I there think was like, a, well, there wasn't. Like I cried when Will like poured his heart out in the car to Mike. I mean, let's talk yeah. about will um i know we've been having discussion about will um and like i know you you use the term double agent which to me sounds weird well not so much and, a double agent as in like i think that he is one of the ways vecna is peering into what's going on in the real in like reality right now like in this universe yes he's an empath he's an empath and i think he's also on the upside of it knows that he's being used by vecna i don't think he i think he knows something's up and i, well, that's what I mean like he doesn't know exactly what's happening but he knows yeah. there's something going on right and he's trying to get across to the group like hey i can like he said at the end of the, that season like he's not dead he's yeah. like just he's healing somewhere in the upside down he's not gonna stop and he's like just recovering to attack so i think that's like his like not so much a double agent but that's like the easiest way to explain it like i think he's like conflicted in the fact that he's being used by both sides kind of like not being used so much on the reality side but he's being used by vecna as a right. way to look into reality into this universe but but also he's like wants to defeat him at the same time and that's like an inner conflict he has with himself that he's I, like i also have this sinking feeling because the duffer brothers did say will will be taking have a huge part in season five yeah i think it all comes back to will it started with will i think it's going to end yes. with will and i yes. think that either will will sacrifice himself will could die or yes. he knows that maybe Mike or Eleven could die. And maybe that's what's... No, I think someone, he... Or maybe he knows he's the... He's the he, knows, he knows that Eleven needs Mike to defeat one. Yeah. Without Mike, Eleven can't do it. Like they did in this season, towards right. the end of the season. Yeah. Where the whole thing of Mike and Will's story was Will getting Mike to realize like you are the thing that is pushing L. Like you are the you are like are her muse, so to speak. Like you need to be behind her. She needs to have you in her corner. A part of the group. Yes. But she needs like mostly not even just the group, but like of L. Like she needs you to boost her up, to power her up to be able to do things. Like yeah. without that, she's just an unguided missile basically. So I think that's like his thing is building the group up in that way. And then 
I think it's going to end up being like, he's going to finally have to confront what's been going on inside him this whole time and pick a side basically. Like, is he going to work on the upside down side and let it take him over? Or is he going to fight it and like sacrifice himself in a way to like not allow that connection anymore? I don't think it's a choice with the connect the connections there, you know. Yeah, but I know that's what I'm saying. I think like he's gonna find out like they're gonna like they'll be that episode kind of like they did with Nancy, where he basically told her told her his whole plan. There's gonna be that kind of thing with Will, like you've been why I've been able to do this, like because I took you and I captured you first, and I've been using you this whole time to direct what I wanted without you knowing it. Yeah. Kind of thing and then he's gonna be like well i'm gonna stop you from doing that and he's gonna sacrifice himself yeah it's and he'll I, like I, do they'll have the whole thing where he like admits his you know love for mike and that whole thing and i don't know i don't know about that i don't know well I, there's I, definitely there's definitely something there that's like i mean a very 80s trope that whole car scene of him like saying like you like you need to just tell her you love her blah 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 like telling the person that you love that they need to talk to somebody else and help them find happiness with somebody else when you want to be the person that they're in love with yeah i'm not 100 percent sold on it yet but yeah i i get i, I agree like i kind of feel like there's something else but maybe it could be i also have this theory that eddie is not dead oh eddie's dead he he died he's i think a la the max situation where max's consciousness is in the ether that i think well, vecna has max's consciousness no she's the linchpin not, of the whole season five the the reason the whole um the town he got he killed her but she's in a coma and when 11 went into her her head she was not there because she's brain no no because i think vecna took her soul i don't know i don't think so i think he has her hostage inside where he's recuperating yeah i I don't it's gonna be a fight like it's gonna be like the lynch of that fifth season it's basically going to be the battle for Max's consciousness. It's like that's going to be part of the season. Maybe that, I, I don't know. I does that make that's the only thing to me that makes sense is why would you keep her around if she's brain dead? Why would you just leave her body there? In story wise, why would why wouldn't you just kill her off why? the show? Why, why keep why? her as a pawn on the? Why keep her as a piece on the board? if she's not going to be used next season, just be sitting in a hospital the whole season? We don't know. That makes no sense. So I think there's going to be something where Eleven's going to have to go in and they're going to find like her consciousness is being held captive somewhere in the upside down. And she has to go and get it or inside the ether mind, whatever that thing is. Well, maybe Max will just be in there and that's it. Um, I mean, I do think there's a reason, but I also felt like, the way the show ended, it was because Eleven saw the pain Lucas had and was just like, I'm going to try to save her. Yes. And it was just... Well, Lucas, no, that was more like, her just being like, no, I'm not going to let you die. I, you know. Yeah. It, this so was, he brought her, her body back, but her consciousness is somewhere else. Yeah. This was the Empire. This was the... Avengers. Oh, very much so. This is definitely the Empire. That's season. a Han Solo being frozen yes. in carbonite. You yes. know? Max is the Han Solo of this. Yeah. And that makes Lucas Princess Leia. Um, man, hey, when he, that was a heart wrenching moment. Um, they were so good. Lucas was so I good. I just don't think, like, I just, I think it's, I don't know if they expected it to be as big as it turned out being the Eddie character. But it's almost like it's one of those things where they killed him off, but it's happened before in other shows 
where the character's gotten so big that they have to bring the character back because it's just so popular. But yet, Stranger Things hasn't if there's done that. that. Well, they haven't done it yet, but it doesn't mean they can't. It's, happened, think... it's a very 80s trope thing to do, too, is, oh, this character turned out to be so big, we just end up magically, they're fine. I think Eddie's gone. I think Eddie was there. later in some other place. Huh? I don't think he's going to come back, like, alive, but I think you'll definitely see him somehow involved somewhere. I think Eddie's death. Yeah, like a is... like a astral, like a no force ghost kind of situation. No, no, Eddie's done. I think he gave Dustin his um, confidence to be a better person because Dustin looked up to him. That was like a brother figure to him. So I think his death, his his uh, the way he was, will make Dustin a better person. Um, yeah. But I don't think, I think Eddie's gone. I mean, a lot of the um, season favorites have died. And, you know, I don't think there's any reason to bring Eddie back. Yeah. Um, like, these guys have had this story planned out since season one. So I think, you know, we're not going to see the new season until 2024, they announced. I know. That's a long time. Um, I'm sure filming and the the CG... Is Will's brother will look like 60 by then. I know, right? <laughs> but they're probably filming it this year. <laughs> that poor guy does not look like he's in his 20s. Who? Will's brother. The one that's dating Nancy, Jonathan. Oh, he's like in his early 20s now. In real life. I know, but he doesn't look it though. Like he's aging ungracefully. Well, he's better. Like, they're definitely having to like make his wigs and stuff way more intense to make him look younger because he's just like he's you can tell he's that one person in the group that's like aging quicker than everyone else is like facial wise like he's almost got wrinkles at this point he's like, not that bad <laughs> you put him along steve and nancy Oh, he doesn't wait. look like they're the same age group. He looks right, like he's totally. been out of college for at least 10, 15 years at this point. Yeah, it looks like he's just graduating college. Yeah. 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 And they're just growing into college. So yeah. Um so I know I in, in our text thread, like, so I I I cut back my caffeine intake and doesn't notice. I haven't noticed. I only drink coffee in the morning. Doesn't, doesn't seem like it's working too well so far. Well, we're we watched the final ep- this, the episode before the last episode. Uh-huh. We started thirty minutes, and I was like, "I'm so tired, I gotta go to bed." So yeah. the next day, we start the last episode, and I was like, "I'm gonna drink one cup of coffee to help me stay awake." Mm. Holy crap! I haven't had a cup of coffee late at night in a very long time, like a month now. Yeah, I was up till one in the morning. I was like out of yes. my mind. I. Got shitty sleep. Um, but I just kept thinking about Stranger Things when I woke up at four in the morning. Yeah. And like, that's how much I didn't realize how much caffeine was affecting me until yeah. I gave it up. After three o'clock, I don't have any more caffeine. Um, I have one cup at three, and that's it. <laughs> I've been drinking seltzers. I'm an old man now. Flavored seltzers is my new thing. Okay. Yeah, I love them. I don't. I don't. I gotta admit, I don't understand the caffeine thing with people anymore. I don't understand it. What do you mean? I haven't had caffeine in years, so to me, it's like the fact that people like talk about like, oh, caffeine. I got. I only have it at a certain time of day. It's like you don't need it at all. We don't need anything at all, Mark. I'm sure you enjoy indulge on things that I don't like. I enjoy caffeine, but I, yeah. I know I had a cup back. That's all. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, it's just when people are like, oh, I can't, like people say to me all the time, like, even at work, like, oh, you guys, you don't need a cup of coffee when you wake up in the morning to get you going. I'm like, no, I just wake up. I mean, of course I don't I need it. I yeah. want it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, like when someone drinks a, a beer, they don't need the beer. They no, want no. the beer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. But anyway, I was thinking about uh, Hopper when he picked up the sword, and then it dawned on me, I was thinking about season one and how they were kind of playing to the D&D uh, characters, 
And then I was, oh my God, they were playing to like Rocky and our- He's the paladin. Yeah, but Rocky had said, you know, that very first episode when they're playing basketball and they're playing that DC, Rocky goes, I feel like that's how it's going to end or something. And I was like, holy shit. So yeah, I wrote, I wrote down everything because I had to get it out of my head. Um, but Hopper was a, was a fighter or a paladin. Yes, Oathbreaker um, paladin. A paladin basically is fighting for something. And like, I was like, well, he's fighting for Eleven. He's fighting for the kids. So I kind of feel like he's more of a paladin than a fighter. And he had- Well, the- he's like, a, uh, he's like, like one of those classic stories. Like even like in uh, Lord of the Rings, like the Viggo Mortensen character. Yeah. He was like somebody who was supposed to do something and had like everything basically and then lost it all. And then like is now like rebuilding himself back up to be himself again. Right. Like they told the story of how his daughter dies and he lost his family and it sent him down this path and he like was broken. And now he's like on the opposite side of it, reappears muscular all you know butch and ready to go and has the sword and everything he lost weight because he was barely eating anything well that and he also was yeah and also for black widow so black widow he was fat which is a fake fat he wasn't real fat yep it was real fat i know but he was like muscular underneath it though because he was as they were shooting this the same time they did stranger things dude he was that's how long they've been shooting this 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 season. He was obesely big during Black Widow. I know, because it was right after Stranger Things. So I'm saying like it's crazy because it's like that's how long this se- this season of Stranger Things has been shooting. No, he's skinny now though. He lost I know, I know what I'm saying. Like yeah. when they started this Black Widow, when they shot Black Widow, it was right after he got off Stranger Things season three. Three. Yeah. So that's how long this has been shooting, is that he's been able to get to this point. Yeah. Um, it's like, I think all told, it's been over three years or something they've been shooting well, this season. It's COVID shut him down. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, that's crazy. Also, when Eddie has his epic moment playing Master of Puppets. Yes. Like, oh, he's the bard, obviously. Yes. yes. Um, Nancy, Stephen, Robin are all rogues because they're yes. sneaking in. They're, they're, they're sneaking in. They're trying to do yes. something on the, the down low. I'm like, oh, they're Mark. Playing yes. DC rogues. Yes. Uh, Eleven. Nancy is the main rogue, though. She's the rogue. I think. I think Steve and Robin were just roped into being that character with her for this. Yeah, but they're all. I don't think Robin is a rogue. I think they were just playing that part of the thing. I think Steve is like a fighter character more than he is anything else. I think Nancy's the rogue. Because she's the one that like went into the psych ward and like did the whole thing with the telling of the stories, and she like is like always like able to maneuver her way around without anyone seeing her, so to speak. That's fair. Um, I said uh, eleven was either a wizard or a sorcerer, um, but I was leaning towards sorcerer more because she could heal. She tries to be a mage, though. Huh? That'd be a mage. I don't know all the characters like well in Dungeons and Dragons. I'm asking more than I, I that's why I asked John. But I, that's okay. when I Googled these, it helped like me. The healing it. thing reminds me of like mage. Well, sorcerer can heal too. Can I? Okay. Um, and then Dustin I'm very beginner me. level when it comes to Dungeon Dragons still, so I don't know all the Yeah, me me too. Uh, <laughs> I said uh, Dustin is a barbarian. Um because he 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 goes running right into battle like yeah he's like yeah. Well, thank once Eddie yes. was in trouble he he yes. was just like I'm going in like yeah um but anyway like I was just like up at four in the morning just thinking about all these things and then I'm I like, think they're gonna make write it down. Max the empath of the group no but Will is but I Will think they're gonna make Max the other one like Max will also be able to Max in a coma she's not doing yeah, but I'm saying when she comes out of the coma I'm saying well, we only have one season left, so I don't really know how much they're gonna, they're going to be doing with Max. I have a feeling there's going to be a, some kind of thing 
in the end of this, like towards the middle of next season or something, because they're doing a time jump into the next season. It takes, it, it, they haven't said. No, I did see a thing that says their plan is to do, it's going to be like a time jump between like maybe five years or something like that. I don't know. It feels like it would start off right where this one ended. No, because I think there's going to be like uh, Ross Duffer. This is off an interview he did. Uh, exactly what the defender leaves us. They said one thing for sure. I'm sure we will do a time jump. Ross Duffer said, knowing the fact that the young stars are aging rapidly. Mm. Ideally, we'd have shot seasons four and five back to back, but there was just no feasible way to do that. So these are all discussions we're going to have with our writers when we start the room up. Okay, so they're not hundred. You can guess that Hawkins, Indiana, nay, the world will once again be in peril, thanks to the Upside Down Monsters. But an interview with Variety, the Duffer Brothers said the world of the Upside Down would be more explored in the fifth outing of Stranger Things. A lot of those answers for the Upside Down is really what the basis of season five is about. They couldn't elaborate. The Duffers once again alluded to how the final season will follow the blueprint of George Lucas, the same way the fourth season was inspired by Empire Strikes Back. The final few is going to be more like a return of the Jedi in that not tonally, but just in terms they're going after, they're going from the beginning. There's going to be less ramp up. And I think people will understand what I'm talking about when they see the end of the season, end of this season. It's like, we're just going. Yeah. So we don't know. They haven't even started writing. So anything could change. But that's what they're telling yeah. us now. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't want to speculate too much because I, I enjoy being surprised. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the way whatever they, they do will be good. Because it's like a la Turn of the Jedi and Empire Strikes Back. There was a tiny bit of a time jump there. Or I think you could go a year or two time jump to kind of like catch up to the kids ages, like real ages more. Yeah. yeah. So you're not like trying to convince everyone that 11 is like 13 when she's almost 20 years old. Well, at this point. we know there was a time jump between last season and this season and we know yeah. she's 13 she's a teenager she's yeah. like probably 15 16 yeah um but yeah i mean i i could see them going a year or two just to kind of yeah like you say go with the age i agree yeah 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 because then you have enough like you could then say that you've had enough time where you can do a beginning of the season like what's been going on right montage and like you could do the thing where she's like went in and like Max is healed physically from all her injuries. And so then she's just basically just there in a coma, but she's healed. Like her bones are all healed and everything's healed. And so then you could do the scene at the beginning of the season where she goes and has to fight for Max's consciousness or find her consciousness to reattach it to her body to then like bring Max back into the fold, so to speak. And you wouldn't have to be like just putting her consciousness back in a broken body. The body would be ready to go, you know, to join in in the fight, the big battle fight. Or if she could just be in a coma. Well, because like, like we were saying, she's like the Han Solo from Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Beginning of Return of the Jedi was them going and finding Han Solo. Yeah. And saving him from Jabba's palace. Yeah. Basically the same kind of thing, just with Max's consciousness, going and finding it, bringing her back. And now she's part of the team that go and fight the big battle. Yeah. Dude, I, I have to say that was such a sad scene when they, they were like, oh, are they going to show it? And they showed how she, she can't yeah. find her. Yeah. Oh, so heartbreaking. Yeah. So well done. Yeah. Um, the whole season was just well done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, for me, the whole show was a 10. Like every yeah. episode was a 10. Um, I mean, Netflix should be writing them so many thank you notes for saving their, their bacon, basically. Oh, in the promotion, at, like we went to Walmart 
there's Stranger yeah. Things stuff everywhere. I went to the I went to PetSmart. They have Stranger Things dog toys. Yeah. Um, we got the pizza from the pizza place. I sent you the photo. Yeah. yeah. Um, the fro- they make frozen pizza with the the, the box. frozen boy pizza. Uh, uh, surfer boy pizza. Yeah. Um, uh, if you if you don't try, don't deny. If you can't try, if you don't try, don't deny. Yeah. Um, but and I've tried, and pineapple's gross on pizza. So I love pineapple on pizza. So you're weird. I love Hawaiian pizzas. Ugh, disgusting. Pineapple and ham, two great blasphemy. Tastes great together. Blasphemy. Yeah. Um, but I hate pepperoni. I don't like any meat really on pizza. I like ham and pineapple, but I don't like sausage. I don't like pepperoni. Um. I do like a good barbecue chicken pizza, though. That's good. Mm. Grilled barbecue chicken. Um, but yeah, I, like I'm excited to see what they're going to do next. I it sucks that it's over. Um, yeah. But I was also talking to Dallas, and I'm like, we should watch all the seasons once once we know it's coming back. We should go from yeah. season one. Um, I don't know. We might do that. Because it's yeah. two years. Maybe a lot. Yeah, two yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um. But anyway, yeah, yeah Mark. Well, Netflix first, is still around by then. Yeah, they're not going to go anywhere. <laughs> Netflix is not going anywhere. Uh, All this, the great decisions they've been making lately. Hopefully, they're still around by then. This month, I am excited for the Resident Evil show coming out. I definitely want to check that out. Hmm. It's on my radar. Um, and I will be jumping into Umbrella Academy once I finish volume one of the graphic novel. Um, yeah. So I will be watching. We did watch on Netflix The G Word with Adam Conover, which was really good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. basically a new version of uh, Adam Ruins Adam Everything. Adam Ruins Everything, yeah. We've been yeah. watching the uh, Iron Chef on there, too. Iron Chef. I, I've never watched a cooking show. Yeah, I mean, I I watch them. I get sucked in, but I don't really. But I know people love those. Yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, Good stuff. Um, anything else, Mark? Before we wrap it up. No, just I will also give Stranger Things season four a ten as well. Yeah, it is arguably, I think, the best thing to come out this year so far. I agree totally. It's right up there with Loki, for best shows that have come out this year well Loki didn't come out this year but was it last year yeah Loki came out last year whatever but anyways yeah and they come out in a while it's the best thing i've seen since Loki probably um i mean it's definitely but, one of my top shows that and Barry are probably my two top uh mm. shows this year for for new shows i mean granted Letter Kenny and Shorzy, those are comedies. Yeah. Um, but like for brand new stuff, yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, definitely my top favorites. Yeah. But I got to start keeping a list of everything I can watch and read over the year because I forget. <laughs> and like, I'm like, what did I watch this year? Because it happens so quickly. And there's so many things. That's there the thing. is. And I make, I make a list for everything. And I should really start doing that. You should. You should so we don't rewatch things that you've already watched. Um, because we have Andor coming out at the end of August. Is that coming out this year? Yes. So speaking of Endor, it was released that the first season is going to take place like five years before, before Rogue, Rogue One. One yeah. Season. And what they're two. doing it is they're going to do twelve episode seasons. What it's going to be is they're they were shot in four blocks of three episodes and all like each block will span a year of time yeah so the first two episodes will be five years ago and then then it'll go like it'll move up and move up and move up so interesting i hope it's good i hope it's yeah good. yeah um you know obi-wan was good but i i, I hope endor is better Andor is going to be more about i think you're going to see a lot of people from obi-wan like ancillary characters 
show up in Andor? Because this is like, it was like the establishing of the rebellion in Obi Wan. And this is going to be more of showing like that story of how the rebellion was started in Andor. Right, right. Makes sense. So, yeah. Oh. So that'd be good. It's supposed yeah. to be really good. From what well, the director said or someone I saw said it was it's an epic undertaking. Yes. Yeah. The amount of stuff that. they've shot in the sets and everything. And they use all practical sets. They didn't do the volume like the other shows have. They wanted to do everything old school. All the, the original Star Wars but yeah. they sets and did the whole thing that way and not the other way. Yeah. I will say Obi-Wan did look good when they had the uh, light, light saber fights and whatnot. Yeah. Um, it was what it, it looked. I like the lighting. I like the feel. Yeah. I like the look. Yeah. No, it was a really good show. It just, you know, it just had its writing problems. Well, I think it was more of just the, it was a, it was a, a writing had the, that suffered a little bit from the solo story curse. I don't even think that being like, like, we all know what happens and you're just basically just filling in between lines that we don't really need to be filled in. Right. I agree with that, but I also think the writing was bad. My favorite part of, of uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi still is that laser force field gate where literally hmm. when they show you the wide shot, they could just walk right around. Like yeah, literally yeah, you don't even yeah. I, like that. It's just why, why? Well, that's like any, movie, so like silly. any show like that where they have a checkpoint, you could just walk around the checkpoint, but yes, but then he had to shut it up to get through. He's like, how am I going to get through? Well, because well, it's you like, you can't around. just, you can't fit a hole. It'd be easier to just walk straight as opposed to walk up and around no literally when they show the wide shot like the booth part with the, the the beams are coming out they was it was open you literally i know but it's supposed to be like your own like you know like you would just wait for the gate to open you wouldn't walk around you you know i don't know just bad all the rules brian just bad all the writing rules. all um, the rules other than that star wars don't think that much about it i th- i agree with you but sometimes you know they could uh I just think the no. writing was bad. The writer. That's my that's my new thing. Anytime anyone complains about Star Wars, it's Star Wars. You're complaining about story of a of a thing that takes place in a galaxy far, far away, and you're asking, you're wanting to like complain about how it doesn't fit into our reality of how things happen. I... There, there are people shooting lasers at each other. And fighting with no, electrical swords. No, 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 no. It's I, Star Wars. I, listen, Mando done very well. No complaints there. There's some things in Mando too that you can say the same yes, thing. Yes, but when when it's so good, you can ignore them. It doesn't bother me. But Obi Wan had just weird things. That's called being nitpicky. No. It's yes. Just sad. I if don't it's think so. if it's something that bothers you in Obi Wan, like that gate. If that gate thing were to happen in Mandalorian. You would just let it go because it's Mandalorian. No, I would be like, why? It's silly. Why did? Why no, did I you think you would just let it go because it's Mandalorian. You wouldn't notice it as much, right? Because I'm so enthralled by how great the show is. I'm just saying. I think Obi Wan was a good show. It's called being a curmudgeon, Brian. That's fine. It happens. It was a good show. It could have been shorter. The last ep- the last two episodes were the best, and well, it's because it was it wasn't. Mandalorian, it was Boba Fett. Obi Wan. Oh, I thought you want the Boba Fett show. No, oh. I said I said Obi Wan was oh. a good show. It could have been shorter. The last two episodes were my favorite. I don't think you could have done a four episode show though. I That's think it thing. could have. You been have to shorter. do at least six. You have to do at least six to make it worth doing. They could have cut a little bit of that out. I don't think you could have. I think you just have to do six is your minimum. Or what's the point of doing it? No one's going to greenlight a four episode show. Why not? Because it's not worth the money. You don't make any money that way. It's Disney. Like they need to make the money. It doesn't matter if it's Disney or anybody. You still want to make the money. <laughs> you still got to make the money. Things just to do things. Well, we got tons of money. We don't need any more of it. Let's just do that because it's fun. Obi Wan oh, okay. was a show they just did to do. I mean, they no, really they did it so people would anything. watch it and they could sell the products for it. 
I don't know. I, I'm this just, is not just sitting in a room somewhere. It's not some guy going like, well, we've made all the money we're going to make this year, boys. Let's just, let's just cash in the rest of this season. Let's just, you know, do a four episode Obi-Wan show. We don't need to do six. Well, originally this Obi-Wan show was going to be a movie. Yeah. But Solo did so poorly. They scrapped that idea. Or so was Boba Fett. When you go back, yeah, when you go back, they, they had that big timeline. Yes. Obi Wan was going to be a movie. Yes. Um, so, yes, they do change things. Um, but I don't know. Anyway, we talked about it last week. We don't need to rehash yes. it again. Um, so, we have the Manchester show in a couple weeks. We do. We do. July 24th, Sunday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Army and Navy Club, 1090 Main Street, Manchester, Connecticut. Then at the end of the month is Trificon. Yeah, where's that going to be held? Mohegan Sun. Is it the following weekend or the same weekend? The following weekend. Oh, okay. the final weekend of the month. Got it. When it goes from, yeah, July. Yeah. Are you going to that? I don't know yet. I haven't talked to Matt about it yet. See what he's doing. Because I think we are supposed to be trying to play D and D on the 30th. Yeah, no, I wouldn't be there the whole weekend. I usually just go like the Saturday or something. Well, set that is a Saturday. Yeah, I know. But I would just move it to the Sunday or whatever. I don't know. I don't even know if I'm going. I don't know what he's doing yet. I haven't talked to him about it. Okay. All right, Mark. Let's wrap it up. Uh, right. Look this. Follow us, and we'll be back next week with Thor. Yes, love and thunder. Gotta get it. As always, be well, be good, be kind. Rewind. Bye, everybody. Bye bye.